You're watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. Follow along with projects and footage with a premium download available at borisfx.com. We are back in the second part of exercise five, the right way to use tracking data. And we have a uh, an old friend here. Remember this uh, card spinning around from an earlier exercise? Well, we're going to be doing something a little bit different with this to see how we can use corner pin data. So let's let's take a look at what we've got already. I've, I've actually tracked this in so we don't have to do it together. And uh, we've, we end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So I've got my card track. You can see I've tracked it with perspective. Um, this was not the, the easiest of tracks because of all the motion blur. And I even had to use a just track on this one, which is something that Mary's going to be talking about in exercise six. So you should look forward to that. But the important part of this project is how we take this information out and use it in our project. OK, so let's uh, exit out of here. So let's bring in the layer that we want to uh, replace this card front with. Uh, and I've got in my project, I've just created this card replace JPEG. It's just something strange and nonsensey. Uh, just a little bit of a, a fun sort of fill. There we go. And I'll just trim that up so it fits the, the same um, time. OK, so let's come in and we'll go to tracking data. And just as we did with the transform data, we need to create the tracking data. Again, there's only one. Have the cog turned on, hit OK. And now we need to decide what type of export we're going to use. And we have two types in uh, Mocha AE. We have corner pin or corner pin that supports motion blur. I'm just going to use corner pin for now. And let's see what happens when we apply this to our card replace. Hit apply export. And let's just RAM preview that. OK, so it's there almost. But it's offset. So why is that? Well, let's take a look at the most important thing. And let's have a look at our composition settings. And our composition and as such, our main footage that we're using is 1920 by 1080. So full HD. And if we look in the project and go to our fast spinning card, we can see that is also 1920 by 1080. If we look at the card replace, though, it's 1920 by 840. Hmm. So there's a mismatch going on here. Now, the easiest way to fix this, no matter what type of corner pin you are going to be applying, is to make sure that our insert size is the same as our tracked clip size. So how do we do this? Well, let's let's come back into our comp. Let's come to my effect controls. I'm on the card replace layer. Let me just get rid of that corner pin. So we've just got the original here. So what we want to do is we want to pre-compose this layer. So I'm going to go layer, pre-compose. I can also just right click on the clip and go pre-compose, or I can use the keyboard shortcut. Uh, Control Shift C or Command Shift C on Mac. And what we want to do, let's let's bring this in here so you can see this a bit better. What we want to do is make sure that we move all attributes into the new composition. And we want to open this new composition as well. So we can hit OK. Now our composition here, Let's have a look at the composition settings. Our composition here matches the one that we had previously. So that's 1920 by 1080. Perfect. So all we have to do is fill this composition with this image. And this is very simple to do. There's no guesswork to it. We just right click on the image, transform, fit to comp. So Control Alt F or Command Option F on Mac. This stretches it out so it fills in the composition. And now when we come back to our main comp, it's also filled that up. I should also have selected trim our composition, but that's fine. We live and learn. There we go. That's fine. I'll just trim that up there. No one will notice. And now let's see what happens when I 
come back into my spinning card layer, look at our Mocha export, export out the corner pin, and the layer to export is going to be this card replace comp. So now we apply the export as we did before, do a RAM preview, and that fits in absolutely perfectly. There we go, that's looking great. So that's the first important thing that we have to do to make sure that the layer we want to insert is the same resolution as the source clip that we tracked in. The second thing we're gonna look at is the export options. So we have corner pin or corner pin supports motion blur in Mocha AE. I'm gonna zoom in and take a look here. So in the original recorded one, we can see there's a lot of motion blur on the image. And yet when we're using just the regular corner pin, there is no motion blur at all. I can turn on motion blur here, uh, let's turn that on there and make sure that's enabled in the composition and it still remains the same. So this is gonna give a less realistic composite than if we had motion blur. So let's see what the other option gives us. So I'm gonna get rid of this uh, corner pin here, just delete that, come back into the layer that I tracked and change my export option to corner pin supports motion blur. Not gonna change anything else, just gonna hit apply export. And now, because I have motion blur already turned on from when we were looking before, as this moves around, we're actually getting the right sort of motion blur that fits in. There we go, with our main image. So if I zoom out a little bit here, get up to 100% and do a quick RAM preview. This is looking a lot more realistic already. So how is it able to do that? Well, remember when we um, just did the export corner pin option, we have a look at the insert layer. It still just used the regular corner pin effect. But if I hit U on the keyboard to show all the other keyframes, you can see that Mocha has also created position, scale, and rotation keyframes on every single frame as well. And that's what's helping to drive the motion blur because After Effects built-in corner pin has no concept of motion blur. So we have to cheat it using position, scale, and rotation as well as the, uh, the corner pin data. So let's get rid of our corner pin and reset all of our layers there or all of our data there and come back into our card spinning layer. If we have a look at Mocha Pro, um, I've got the same project loaded in, uh, in my Mocha Pro plugin. Let's have a little look here. It's exactly the same. There we go. And if I come down to tracking data now, Let's do the same thing. Let's create that tracking data. Cog, okay. And if I come down to the export option now, Mocha Pro has one extra one available to us. Uh, and that's being able to use the CC power pin. So this is another bundled corner pin effect in After Effects. Uh, and let's see what this allows us to do. So let's um, apply this to the card again, apply the export. And we can already see that this does uh, have motion blur on it. Let's come to an area here, zoom in. Back to 200%. So you can see it has got motion blur on it. Let's hit U on that layer to see what keyframes we've got. And we've only got our keyframes on the, the power pin. So by using the CC power pin, we maintain the ability to have motion blur whilst also not clogging up our other uh, parameters with extra keyframes. This is nice. One of the other things that you might want to, to look at, if your motion blur doesn't quite match what's going on uh, in the, the main footage, the way to, uh, to change that is to come to Composition, Composition Settings, come in over to Advanced, and we can change things up like the shutter angle and the shutter phase. Take that to minus 180. And has that changed it in a good way or has that just 
shifted the lag in a different way. Not sure. It's probably just shifted the lag in a different way. So I think I'll uh, I'll keep that at, at minus 90. There we go. That's That seems to have fit in a little bit better. So that's something to look out for if your you know, comps really aren't lining up, uh, but they look fine in Mocha. So that's how we start to use the different types of corner pinning effects in Mocha AE and Mocha Pro. In the next part of Exercise 5, we're going to be looking at other ways that we can start to use the tracking data as well to do stabilization. So join me in part three of the right way to use tracking data. Coming up after this break. You've been watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. To download all videos, projects, and footage, purchase the premium version available at borisfx.com.